subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Hello, my lovely student. Welcome once again to Joy Learning TV. Today is time for elective ICT. And I'm promising you, you are going to enjoy this lesson so much. So I want you to uh, tell a friend to tell a friend that it's time for ICT. And we should all gather and then learn together. Thank you so much. And today, we'll be, we are looking at the topic, types of information system. Remember, in our previous lesson, we talked about information system. Today, we are looking at the types of information system. And I'm, I'm promising you that you are going to enjoy this lesson. I want you to invite in all the elective ICT students you know around that on Joy Learning TV, there is elective ICT lessons so they can all enjoy. Thank you so much. And now let's get into the lesson. Today, let's look at the objectives of the lesson. And by the end of the lesson, you, the student, will be able to describe the five types of information systems. And two, identify the two benefits each of the five types of information system is. And lastly, you discuss the attributes of a good information. Right. Let's look at the introduction for this lesson. And in our previous lessons, we discussed the processes of an information system. Mention the components of an information system. Can you mention any four institutions that make use of information system in their daily operations? And I know all was discussed. And I think you can do this for me. Right, so in the purposes of our discussion or in this lesson, we'll use the GCB Bank as an example. GCB Bank has numerous branches across the country. Because of their large customer base, the bank has adapted information system to manage activities of customers. They have installed all hardware, software, data, network devices, and have trained their staff to combine the use of technology and various business processes to make decisions and wise decisions. The bank has adapted different types of information system at various functional levels. These different types of information system are what we are going to discuss in this lesson, right? So now let's look at the types of information system. And in the first place, we'll look at transaction processing system, which is TPS, transaction processing system. And two, we'll look at office automation system, that is OAS. Then we'll look at management information system, which is MIS. Then we'll look at decision support system, and that is DSS. And then lastly, look at the executive support system, which is ESS. Right, so these are the five types of information system that I'm seeing that GCB Bank has adopted in their processes as the, one of the leading banks in Ghana. So let's take them one after the other and explain them. Then we know that this type of information system is in the form of a hierarchy or in a pyramid form. So um, 
obviously the transaction processing system formed the base of this pyramid because that is where day-to-day -day transactions begin. So data is first of all captured under the transaction processing system. So um, let's look at how the pyramid of the types of information system look like. All right, and I think now you can see it right on your screen, the pyramid for the types of information system adopted by Ghana Commercial Bank. So GCB Bank has adopted the five level pyramid model of information system. Each level of the pyramid is an information system functional level of the operations at GCB Bank. And every, every level requires special and knowledge to operate. It requires special knowledge to operate. Right. So I said earlier on that data, basic data, is captured at the base. And the information system that is used there is the transaction processing system. That is the TPS. And when all this basic data is captured, it is being uh, used or captured by the office automation systems, the office automation system. That is the OAS. The OAS is able to um, capture all this basic data and then send it to the MIS, which is the management information system. The MIS is able to process this basic data and then it becomes information. So you look at the pyramid from basic data, we move on to information. So it means that when the basic data gets into the management information system, now the data is refined. The data is processed to become information, right? And from there, from management information system, it is moved to decision support system. And you see that at the decision support system, the information becomes an explicit knowledge. It becomes an explicit knowledge, which is normally used by senior managers of the, the bank, the Ghana Commercial Bank. I'm talking about managers, senior managers in the bank. And then finally, the DSS sends the explicit knowledge into the executive support system, which is the ESS, where tactic knowledge is taking place. And this one is used by the board of directors of the bank, where they take tactic info, uh, knowledge or decisions, decisions which are unstructured are taking place in the executive support system. Remember, I've told you that it is only the board of directors that uses the executive support system in taking any tactics and unstructured decisions. Right, so let's proceed and take them one after the other as we explain all these five types of information system. So we begin from transaction processing, which I've already give you a glimpse. Or yes, uh, the pyramid is further explained here, like how I have explained it. We have the level of operation at the pyramid side on your screen. It is at your right, but it is on my left. Whilst I look on the screen, so we have the transaction processing system which generates basic data. And this data can be of sales date. We have item numbers, the item description. So when you take GCB uh, uh, as an example, we know that the data is captured right at the teller's point or the personal, personal banker's point where basic data 
is being collected. And it is being collected by the use of the office automation system. And you realize that it also has the basic data because these are the tools, the machines, the hardwares that we use in capturing the basic data. And now it is being sent to the management information system and the management information system processes this basic data to become information. And the information leads to the to facilitate communication within the outside the organization and provide information to decision support system to make decisions. So it means that the MIS is able to process the basic data and then provide information to the DSS. So in the DSS, the decision support system, then we get an explicit knowledge, an explicit knowledge, which will rely on the data or the information, the documents, the files, the records, from the MIS to make concrete decisions. Then finally, the DSS gives this knowledge to the executive support system, which when we use the GCB as an example, then it is the board of directors who uses this system, the executive support system, in making tactic knowledge or unstructured decisions they rely on experiences, thinking, competences, commitments, and deems to make decisions. And these decisions that I'm talking about is unstructured decisions, right? So what is this transaction processing system that we are talking about? And then we say that first, Transactions happens when two people make an exchange and collecting data about it is called transaction processing. So transaction processing is collecting, storing, modifying, and retrieving the transactions of an organization. Transaction Processing is the collection, storing, modifying, and retrieving the transactions of an organization. And transaction system is important to answer routine questions. And it helps to conduct business such as orders, receipts, invoices, payments, bills, payrolls, employees, employees record keeping, or paying an employee. And again, it is important to store the data of the transaction safe and protected because transaction generally involves an exchange of money, which is critical to any organization. So transaction processing is the first step of every organization's information system. That is actually where the basic data of the organization is captured. Beautiful. Right, staff at this level are normally cashiers. Remember, I have talked about the GCB bank being the tellers who interact directly with the customers of the bank. Here, a typical example is the cashiers in other jurisdictions or organizations like hoteliers. We have the recep receptionist. We have salespersons. We have clerks. We have secretaries and all data entry staff. Logistics staffs such as purchasing clerks. All these are the staff who uses transaction processing 
system. So TPS, which is the Transaction Processing System staff at the GCB, is the tellers, the personnel bankers who interact with customers first in the bank. They serve customers who open accounts, cash out, pay in, and redraw foreign remittances. Right. Let's look at the benefits of transaction processing system. The benefits of transaction processing system in every organization. One, the handling of several thousands of operations at the same time. So transaction processing is able to give all customers opportunity to do business with a bank or any other institution that we are talking about concurrently or simultaneously without any delays. And therefore, transaction processing system is very, very important. And secondly, transaction processing system makes it easier for consumers around the world to utilize a business's services through a simple online system. So transaction processing makes or provide opportunity for every customer irrespective of your geographical location, you are able to transact or do business with the organization without no problem or delays. You can be wherever you are and still do business with the organization. And I know that now in GCB Bank, you can stay at anywhere and use um, other online platforms to transact business with the bank. So these are the benefits of the transaction processing system. Right, let's move on to the second one, which is office automation system. The office automation system, that is OAS. These are the system designed to help workers at the transaction processing level in doing their job. So I said the office automation are the computers, are the scanners, are the biometric machines that we use in the capturing of the basic data that we are talking about. So they are the hardware, software, and the network system designed to capture, process, store, modify, and retrieve request and order of the transactions. An example of this is the point of sales, the POS systems and the ATM systems which are used in the banks. Right, how Office Automated System is used at the GCB bank. The growing demands of GCB customers requires the bank to install OAS to support the following. One, to keep track of massive amount of data in seconds. So the office automation system helps the bank to keep track of massive amount of data in seconds. And two, with this system, customers are able to set themselves with the ATMs and other POS. Customers are able to cash out their money and then even um, pay in their money into the bank with, without any problems and delays. Right, and three, the tellers are able to make informed decisions with speed and accurate and accuracy using money counting machines and other uh, devices. So in a bank, a typical OAS or the office automation system that they use is the money counting machine, which uh, prevents the tellers from making mistakes of counting the 
money. Right. So let's look at the benefits of office automation system. And the first benefit is that data storage and management is ease. So the office automation system is able to store the basic data that is gathered and process them and helps users to be able to retrieve it as and when they need it and to ease the burden of delays in the bank. And two, it saves time and resources. Yes, the office automation system is able to, customers are able to serve themselves or utilize the machines in serving themselves without going to the banking hall or signing an appointment with any teller. You can do it with ease at the comfort of your location without any problem. Right. Let's move on to the third type of information system, which is management information system. So what is a management information system? A management information system is a system that provides information needed to manage organizations effectively. Management information system involves three primary resources. And the first resource is the management. Management is the people in the organization. Information, and that is the process data. And then the technology is the system that we are talking about here. The, the most important resource in management information system is the people or the end users of these systems. Right, so management information system, it converts raw data from transaction processing system into meaningful information. So it is the MIS that converts the basic data or the raw data, which is captured by the TPS into meaningful information. Remember, when we look at the pyramid, we said that at the MIS, that is where the basic data is transformed or processed into meaningful information. And that is what I am alluded again. And two, the information that we get from TPS supports the routine decision making in the functional areas of an organization or of the organization that we find here. Then three, the MIS extracts data from a database to compile reports such as sales analysis, inventory level reports, and financial statement to help managers make routine decisions. So it means that the information gathered at the MIS system is being used by managers the managers of the organization. So in our example, managers of Ghana Commercial Bank uses the MIS in taking management decisions, right? How MIS or management information system is implemented at Ghana Commercial Bank. So at GCB Bank, they, they implement MIS system which is used to provide periodic reports, such as a daily list of employees, and the hours they work, or a monthly report of expenses as compared to a budget. And then the bank uses MIS again because the purpose of MIS is to provide profitability and information to help managers and staff understand the business performance and plan its future directions. Right, so this is how 
GCB Bank implement MIS in their bank. Let's look at the benefits of management information system. And the first benefit is that it facilitates planning. MIS help the bank in facilitating planning. MIS improve the quality of plans by providing relevant information for sound decision making. And two, it brings coordination. It connects all decision centers in the organization. MIS bring coordination. So these are the two benefits that we derive from management information system. Let's move on to the fourth information system that is used in every organization, and that is decision support system, the DSS, the decision support system, DSS. These systems help senior managers with the necessary information to make intelligent decision. Remember, in a pyramid, we said that at the DSS section, it provides explicit knowledge. And this explicit knowledge helps senior managers in taking intelligent decisions. Two, it is designed to provide an interactive environment for decision making by senior managers. Yes, the DSS helps senior managers to interact with the system and take an informed and decisive decisions. And then DSS can be seen as a knowledge-based system. DSS can be seen as a knowledge-based system. It's actually a knowledge-based system where senior managers can always visit and take an explicit knowledge which inform them in taking intelligent decisions, intelligent decisions, and allows its integration into the organization. Right, so DSS is a very, very important tool for senior managers. Right, these systems are often used to, to analyze existing structured information and allow managers to project the potential effect of their decisions into the future. And DSS uses professionals and managers at its level of operation. So there is a nice diagram that shows how DSS information flow is being designed. So all the knowledge that is gained from the MIS is being stored in a repository that we call knowledge database. And I think you can see the knowledge database at where I have circle. So this is where the knowledge is being stored. And this knowledge is being transcended into the decision models. So the salesperson will get an informed decisions from the knowledge database to be able to take and inform decisions whenever there is something like sales. Then we have the revenue, then we have profits, and then we have power. So to be able to take, an, to, to take intelligent decisions, you, as a senior manager, you have to depend on the knowledge database of the decision support system. So this is how this diagram is being explained. So let's look at how decision support system is implemented at GCB Bank. And at first, GCB Bank began as a small bank, centered, small, small, centered in some selected regional capitals in the country, then DSS was used to analyze and synthesize customers' behavior for expansion. And then the various branch managers of GCB Bank uses decision support system to analyze the data 
and come up with the decision of providing technology enablers in their various branches. And three, decision to install ATMs and other technologies can only be taken by the branch managers in consultation with the executive level of management. So this is how GCB Bank has used D, uh, DSS in their implementations. Let's look at the benefits of decision support system. And the first benefit is that it's improved efficiency. The DSS helps senior managers in improving efficiency. Another advantage of DS, DSS is efficient decision making, resulting in better decisions or intelligent decisions. And two, it provides competitive advantages. The decision support system helps senior managers in providing competitive advantages. Advantage, sorry. The use of DSS in an organization provides a competitive advantage over other organizations which do not use DSS because it helps senior managers to analyze and synthesize any um, information or knowledge to help in taking better and intelligent decisions. So, by so doing, it provides a competitive ad advantage over their competitors or the, when you take the bank as an example, over other banks. And I'm sure that's the reason why um, GCB Bank is all over the country. Right. Then the last information system, which we'll talk about, is the executive support system, which is the ESS. In some book, you see it to be executive information system, that is EIS. They are all the same, they mean the same. Don't be confused when other books say that it is executive information system. It's the same as executive support system. Right, so the executive support system are strategic level information system that are found at the top of the pyramid. And of course, when I show the pyramid, you realize that at the executive support system, everything narrowed to a small cage. And over there, as I said, it is being used by the board of directors of the bank, of GCB bank. And therefore, it helps them in making unstructured decisions, decisions that are not structured. And it's being used by few people. And board of directors are few as compared to the millions of customers of the GCB bank who, who interact with the bank every day. All right. Then they help executives and senior managers analyze the environment in which the organization operates to identify long-term trends and to plan appropriate courses of actions in the bank. And that is the reason why I am saying that at the executive support system, it helps the board or senior managers in taking unstructured decisions, long-term trends, decisions that will help the organization to flourish. And three, the information in such system is often unstructured. And I think I've said that one already. It is unstructured and it comes from both internal and external resources or sources. So information that is being used in the executive support system is unstructured and it can come from internally or externally, external sources, right? The executive support systems are designed 
to, to be operated directly by executives without the need for intermediaries and easily tailored to the proficiencies of individual use, individuals using them. Decisions that seeks to upgrade the operations of the whole organization is taken by the ESS. This level involves chief executive officers, board of directors, chairpersons, presidents, managing directors, etc. So these are the stakeholders who uses the executive support system. How is the executive support system implemented at the GCB bank? The customer base of the GCB bank has expanded so large that the demand for their products and services have increased. Customers are now calling for mobile services and other technology enablers like mobile money system, which the bank calls it the G money. And all these were analyzed and synthesized and implemented by the board of directors of the bank. These decisions are taken by members of the executive support system based on the analysis made by the decision support system in conjunction with the executive support systems, right? So let's look at the benefits of the executive support system. And the first benefit is that it enhances personal thinking and decision making. So the ESS helps these board of directors, senior managers in taking um, informed and, and incisive decisions. And that is the reason why it enhances their personal thinking and decision making. And two, it provides easily identification of company's performance. The ESS helps in identifying the performance of every organization. And then it is easy for upper level executive to use. Extensive computer experience is not required in operation. It provides timely delivery of company summary information. Information that is provided is better understood and ESS provide timely delivery of information. Management can make decision promptly. And it improves tracking of information. And it offers efficiency to decision makers. So these are the benefits of the executive support systems. Right, so um, these are the five types of management of an information system. Remember, we have looked at the transaction processing system, the office automation system, the management information system, the decision support system, and lastly, we have looked at the transaction, the executive support system. Then we have looked at all the benefits of each of these types of information system. Please remember to know the meaning of all these systems, which is used in every organization. I use the GCB bank as an example. It can be any organization. It can be any company. So your assignment is that take any organization and see whether these five types of information system can be implemented in those organizations. I use GCB as an example. You can use any organization of your choice. And then tell me at the comment section 
anytime and I'm ready to respond to you at any given time. All right, so we have come to the end of the lesson. Please don't forget to visit our social media platforms. On Facebook is Joy Learning TV. On Instagram is Official Joy Learning TV. And on YouTube is Joy Learning TV. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can get any notification. My name has been Felix Tinkrine. You can call me Tiki in short. I love you and I'll always be with you. Bye and thank you. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.